Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Hawk Talk. I am your host, Colin Cole, and I'm joined by my resident guest host, the three-year starter at Let Right Tackle, the two-time all-conference right tackle for Kirk Ferentz's early years, Mr. David Porter. David, welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be a part of the show. Really enjoy this. Awesome, buddy. I'm glad you can make it. So we're going to jump right into it. The Hawks traveled up to Piscataway, New Jersey this past weekend to take on those Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And what uh, looked to be, uh, it started off with what would look like a tough battle. I mean, on that first drive of the game, um, Rutgers started to definitely, they, they started off the game well. I mean, they, they, they started with a, a good long drive. And, um, you know, I, I think that it was uh, it was something that was not su- expected. Like, I, I didn't expect them to come out uh, and, and be so ferocious, but they did. Um, Evan Simon came out and was uh, was tearing the, the Hawks up on that first drive, but it was definitely not a prequel of what would happen throughout that game as things took a sharp turn uh, shortly thereafter. But they did go down and they did get a, a – a field goal on their opening drive, their opening possession, which was pretty, pretty good for them. Um, and that was, uh, that was about it. Uh, right thereafter, we had the interception return for touchdown by Cooper DeJean. Uh, that we have to make sure we got to give the, the assist to our man, Hercules, our, our man, Luke Van Ness. He got the pressure. He was right in Simon's face as he let that pass go which was a floater, which Cooper, man, that was a tremendous catch, over-the-shoulder catch, man. And that led off the scoring for the Hawkeyes, man. So talk to me a little bit about how this the game started off. Tell, tell me a little bit about what you saw from the Hawkeyes. What's your overall feel? Because, I mean, not only did Cooper DeGene uh, get that interception return for a touchdown, but we also saw a 30-yard fumble return by Kayvon Merriweather uh, by that, again, a stingy Hawkeye defense, creating turnovers and creating scores off those turnovers. But before we jump all the way into it, man, let's just give me your take on your your overall take of the game. I'm going to go back to the opening drive that you uh, you spoke about. So, like, when we started the game, we started off a little flat. And I'm not sure what happened, but we came out and Rutgers got going. I mean, they started fast. It's like they're ready to get after us. We're looking at, what was it, a 66-yard drive, 12 plays that really ended because of a penalty. It was a bad snap. A bad snapping motion by the center against Rutgers. Otherwise, you know, they're looking at scoring. Then they keep the field goal, which I get that. Um, you know, we really need our defense to come back because after that, we went basically three and out on offense. We had to punt. That was the turnaround. And then we, here we are, Rutgers driving again, and we get the turnover. That's that, uh, that Hawk secondary. Right, we call them ball hawks all the time. And these guys have just been freaking ball hungry. And we get that interception for a touchdown. All right, Cooper DeGene turns around, turns that into a touchdown. That really changed the momentum of the game. Because at that, up, in, up until that point, it had really been Rutgers imposing their will on us, on, a, on Iowa. So that was amazing for us. Uh, Rutgers goes back out. They go, what, sixth place, and they got a punt. Uh, we're three and out again, and then there are three and out and a punt, and then we're back to another punt for us, right? And then then we're back here to Kayvon Merriweather. We have that uh, fumble recovery, scoop and score by Kayvon Merriweather, which those two scores in the first quarter by the defense, you can feel just – when I'm watching the game, just watch the other team just get feel so deflated. Then they start really to impose their will, which is a great thing to see. Um, like that. No, we're in the second quarter. I'm getting to the first half. So the uh, really the defense really stepped up. Our structure team stepped up. We can't, we got a field goal in there as well. So we go into the half about uh, 17 to three, and the really the defense <laughs> just did an amazing job. They do what they always do. Uh, the first quarter, like you said in the beginning. It was really a slugfest. Uh, we got out of the 7-3, but the defense really came through and just did what they do all the time. We sent this last game, or last, last recording for last game, uh, after last game. You know, I think the expectation of these guys scoring for us is a real thing, like on a consistent, regular basis. They're that good. 
Mm -hmm. There's no question that the defense led the scoring <clears throat> in this last game. And we already know that the Hawkeye defense is one of the stingiest in the Big Ten. Uh, and so they still currently they're ranked first in the Big Ten as far as scoring defense, which is the most important defensive statistic. But you really, man, I, I really got to give a shout out to those guys along the defensive front, man. Joe Evans, man, he was he was balling out of control. He was, uh, I, I saw him give that um, that number twenty one that, uh, that 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 flex that that that, that running quarterback tight end type guy Johnny Langan. He, I saw him give him a oh. shot on one play, man. Oh and my god, that really, that really set the tone. Uh, those those yeah. interceptions set the tone, but. When you get a chance to hit one of their big play guys like that, um, it really, really sets a different level uh, for in terms of what uh, you guys have to look forward to. You know, it was it was tremendous play by the defense, no question. And those guys got after it, and it was a it was a it was really I, I don't know that uh, we, we definitely talked about it in terms of what our defense brings to the table. But uh, to really see it against, because like I mentioned in, in the pre-game, uh, this was a this was not a defense, or this, this Rutgers defense was right behind, or really closely matched statistically across the board in terms of what they brought to the table and what Iowa brought to the table. And they did get after us a bit. They did get after Spencer a bit. But uh, the Hawkeye defense overall, was tremendous. I mean, you talked about Cooper DeGene to add to that interception return for touchdown. He had seven tackles. Uh, Quinn Schulte oh, wow. had seven tackles. Uh, Riley Moss wow. had six tackles. And Riley Moss, I saw Riley. one play. He had uh, not. He had a couple of breakups in the end zone, which were tremendous plays. But one play that stuck out in my mind was uh, Rutgers ran a reverse, looked like a double reverse. And Riley was he was he stayed at home and mm -hmm. he beat the block of the offensive tackle trying to go kick him out. Uh, to make a tackle for like two yard loss, uh, tremendous, tremendous, and it really just goes back to what we talked about previously. Right? We talked about how well coached this group is on defense, and just really how um, how Phil Parker has these guys just in position always to make the right plays and and to cr create those turnovers like they were able to. Um, but then I got again, I got to go back up to my guys up front, man. Luke Van Ness, I mean Hercules, I mean that guy, the pressure that he put on. Um, Simon to create that turnover. I mean, and then the, the relentless pressure that continued throughout that game. I already mentioned Joe Evans. I mean, we have a ton of guys that have, have contributed throughout this year. Aaron Graves has contributed. Noah Shannon has contributed. Logan Lee has contributed. Those guys up front, it's, it's been a revolving door. And, you know, that's one thing that I have to make mention to uh, about our defense, especially the guys up front, is that Kelvin Bell, Coach Kelvin Bell, has done a tremendous job with making sure that everybody along our defensive front can come in and can spell and can make sure that they are, are top-level rushers as well as uh, getting after the, the opposing offenses in the run game. Because, you know, it's not easy to be able to field four guys, especially in today's NCAA, in today's college football uh, where teams are running these hurry up types of offense and they're keeping defensive linemen on the field, they're keeping defenses on the field, trying to keep them very vanilla. Uh, these, this group of guys, particularly up front, were relentless getting after uh, this Rutgers uh, offensive attack, who, again, like I had to mention, pulled up some points against Wagner um, and they've done a tremendous job against the likes of Boston College earlier in the season. So this was a tremendous matchup for this Hawkeye team, and really, for them to be going into uh, – into a matchup like this where you're going against the, the program's all-time winning as coach, it was uh, it was definitely a tremendous outcome for this Hawkeyes. But bigger 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 part of that, obviously, we 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 have to say that the Hawkeye defense is who we thought they were. Um, they they've gone they they've improved each and every week, and I think that uh, the sky's the limit. Obviously, we'll see how things go moving forward. But let's jump over to that offensive side, David. Um, Got it, man. You got to go there. Gotta jump I knew you were going to do this. So mm -hmm. offensively, offensively, man, we, I, I, I told you before we even started recording that I felt really good about what I saw out of Spencer Petrus. I mean, we know that um, it's a long season, but the bigger part about it is how much do you grow throughout the season? And what I saw out of Spencer in this game, I saw him hit his back foot and get the ball out in terms of 
you know, whether it was a five step drop or, or, or a three step drop, he was getting the ball out of his hands. He was getting it to the playmakers. He looked really decisive. There were still some areas of gray. There's still some times when he wasn't quite so sharp. However, he hit some really nice passes. I saw him hit Laporta down the sideline for like a 40 yard gain. I saw him, you know, throw, he threw some really good balls. Lachey called a really nice one close to the end zone. So we're turning things around, but even still, we, 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 as the Iowa offense goes, we rely heavily on the run game. And before we jump into Spencer, uh, David, what was your views? I mean, LaShawn had a two yard uh, run, rushing touchdown. He had 60 some odd yards overall. The running game, because we run by committee, looked pretty good overall, man. What did, what did you see differently in this game that we haven't seen in the first three games? Uh, this game, we do a lot of, uh, we're doing a lot of traps, which is great with the offensive line. So it kind of confused the defense a little bit, which is great. Um, we did plant and go a little bit better as a running back, and the guys on the line stuck with the guys a little bit longer. So that created some some seams for these running backs to get through. So that was great. That did help, like you said, with Spencer being able to connect with people on the field. Um, but, you know, that helps the defense to play more honestly as opposed to saying, okay, we're just going to play this because we know what's coming. Uh, so that's kind of what I saw going on with there. Uh the old line still has a lot of work to do, um, especially in the pass uh, pass protection. We're going to get to that in a minute. But the, the the run game was not bad. We were starting to run the ball. We had some decent runs. Uh, Caleb Johnson had a really decent one. LaShawn Williams, his longest was uh, 21. So we're, we're starting to get those those chunk runs, which is great. Uh, that's really going to help get the, the, the offense going. Um, yeah, I mean, and the guys really, we got over 100 yards rushing by committee. And that's even including Spencer's um, negative 13 yards rushing. So we're at, what, 129 for the entire game. Compared to Rutgers, they were 61. Our defense was mobbing those dudes. I mean, we were, they were all over them. And, and so we said this, um, at the pregame, that the defense is going to be what's really going to set the tone for this game. And and then the turnovers. Because these guys didn't want to let us run. We started to run. That hurt them a lot. They wanted to run against us. They weren't allowed to do that. Then our secondary kicked in, all right? Uh, Dijon, Cooper Dejean, and then you had uh, Mer- Kayvon Merriweather, all right? Interceptions, two interceptions there. And we have a fumble recovery. So, um our running game is getting there. Uh, we still have some more fists to do. We got to get more drive from our offensive linemen, from of the defense linemen to that second level. We just got to move people. Like this isn't this is not two hand sports. I mean, like you're really going to hit somebody. So get in there and drive. Um, but yeah, like once we get the pass game going, and other teams have to play us on a more even handed basis, and they're not cheating. Um, you'll see that run game get going and, and vice versa. You get the run game going that helps the pass game. It's complimentary football. So it's not just offense and defense. On the offense, it's also passing and uh, rushing the ball too. So we need both those things run, happening at the same time. So, yeah. No question. Like you said, you know, the committee of running backs went, went over 100 yards. <clears throat> LaShawn Williams had 11 carries for 64 yards and a touchdown. Caleb Johnson came in, had 15 carries. He had the bulk of the of the carries for 58 yards. And Gavin Williams got in on the carries with seven for 17. So these guys, the committee put it together and um, <clears throat> rushing the ball did a tremendous job. And like you said, Spencer went 11 for 17. He didn't have any interceptions. I mean, he didn't have any touchdowns, but he also didn't throw any interceptions. He got four to Sam LaPorter. He got two to Luke Lachey. He got two to LaShawn Williams. And two to Gavin Williams and one to Arlen Bruce. Receivers only caught one pass. However, he was able to spread the ball out and he was more decisive and he was more on, on the money with those passes. So offensively, I think that uh, we saw probably the best offensive output by this group all season. If we can stay consistent with what we saw this past week, the sky's the limit for this offense. Just have to be very, very consistent and have to be very decisive when it comes to making the decisions uh, especially those that handle the ball. 
Uh, moving over to the kicking game. Uh, we know that our, our Aussie bomber, Tory Taylor, was out there battling against another Australian kicker. Uh, and and it was a battle in this game, wasn't it? I mean, uh, th- th- their punter's name was um, Adam Corsack. He's also from Australia. He he did a tremendous job of downing a couple of punts inside the five-yard line uh, as a Tory, actually. And so that was a bit of a – that was a bit of a uh, – um, a battle going back for back and forth, you know, position wise, you know, creating those bad positions for, for those offenses. And so that was really what created some of the early on created that, that early turnover because they just guys had to start so far back in their territory uh, that, uh, that, that sat, that hit that ended up getting intercepted by Cooper DeGene. Uh, that was them starting way back in their own territory. So, and the other thing that we saw from, we saw the, the tremendous coverage teams like we always do, but we also saw, the young man Caleb Johnson come in and return. He actually turned two two kicks, and uh, both of those kicks he returned for a total of seventy seven yards. So that young man is getting some opportunities to return um, kickoffs. We also saw as we saw Cooper DeJean back there. He actually caught a couple of punts. Fair called them all, but uh, he actually caught them. So they're trying to give that young man an opportunity on special teams to to get some returns. And so the Hawkeye special teams uh, definitely has set the tempo along with the defense. Offense, the third leg to that tripod is is looking good. So what's your overall assessment of the game, David, before we take off? My overall assessment of the game, like I said, the punting game, Tory Tory did a great job, All right, He had five for uh, 213, four within the 20. Uh, You know, Adam Corsat had four for 168, uh, two in the 20. So we won the battle there Uh, on defense. Our defense was on the field. We had more turnovers. We had three to the to their zero. Uh, so our defense won there. Um, you know, special teams and defense, we really, really just shined. It really did. Uh, the thing to worry about that I wor- worried most about wasn't uh, well. It's more of a team thing on offense. When I look at the third down conversion, we were one for nine. All right, and as we get deeper into the Big Ten season. Going one for nine, especially the guys we had coming in next week, uh, they got the ugliest helmet I've ever seen. You know, having those guys coming in, and then we got Ohio State down the road. We got Wisconsin coming too, and Minnesota. They're looking really tough as well. You know, going one for nine on third down just is not going to cut the mustard for us. It just isn't. We have championship level defense, championship level special teams. You know, the one thing I, I we can uh, really improve upon. And the greatest opportunity to get better is probably for our offense to, you know, convert more, be on the field more. They're doing a great job. They're improving, like you said, week to week. Uh, the QBR is going up. That's what we can ask for. He's our guy, so we got to stick with him. Uh, so we have. These guys are getting better every week. And I guess that's all we can look for, incremental um, improvement. And that's what they're doing. They're playing really well. Uh, they're playing sound. The offense is actually starting to look like an offense. The defense is looking, my God, it's hard for me to say. They might be looking better than they looked last year. They really are. Uh, Now that we have our kicking game going, not the punting game, but actually the field goal game going as well, you know, special teams, they're looking just as good as they did last year, if not better. I didn't think Tour was going to get any better, but he did. He did. So uh, the team overall, we, we have a great platform. The best thing about it, a lot of room for improvement. A lot of opportunity to get better. And that's what the football season is about. It's about working to progress, working to get better as a team, working to uh, finish, working to be, you know, those those small details that uh, you may not have caught in the beginning of the season. Everything is fine-tuned and better by the time the season ends. So four games into the season, this Hawkeye group definitely has their, their hat in the ring. I want to know in the Big Ten – we have a top five Michigan team that's coming into Kinnick Stadium on Saturday. And those guys have been very dominant throughout the season so far. So it's going to be a tough matchup. Uh, we'll get more of that. We'll get into that more uh, in the pregame uh, later on this week. But uh, but right now, uh, we're going to enjoy this, this victory by the Hawkeyes. Great win uh, up there in Piscataway uh, against those Scarlet Knights. Tremendous win against uh, one of the all-time winningest coaches in uh in in Rutgers or the all-time winningest coach in Rutgers history so two tremendous coaches were duking and were faced off in this past week's game 
and uh, the Hawkeyes prevailed. And so bringing their season total to three and one, and we're excited to see where it goes from here. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us on the show again uh, for David Porter. I'm Colin Cole. Thank you guys for joining us on Hawk Talk. God bless and go Hawks. Go Hawks.